LinkedIn, one of the most overlooked platforms, I believe entrepreneurs do not maximize on. And today in this episode, we're going to be talking to a LinkedIn expert who will help us as coaches, speakers, consultants, authors learn how to leverage LinkedIn to grow our businesses and our brands. Many people consider LinkedIn to be a career professional platform, but there is great opportunity for B2B, B2C type businesses to really grow their businesses and brands online. And so we're going to be talking to a great guest who can share some great content and value around that topic. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Maximize Your Brand podcast. Always so excited that you are joining me for each week's episode. And this week, we have a great guest and a great topic all around LinkedIn. How do you leverage LinkedIn for your brand and your business in order to attract clients? Or if you're an author, how do you leverage LinkedIn to sell more books or to enroll people into your potential online courses? This is going to be a great episode. And we are going to be joined by a great guest. But before I introduce him, I want to invite you to join my email list or my group of brand maximizers. All you have to do is text the keyword personal brand, all one word, no spaces, personal brand to 77222. That's personal brand, no spaces, all one word to 77222. One more time, personal brand to 77222. And this will add you to my brand maximizers text community as well as email community where you'll get weekly tips and insight around growing your personal brand and your influence so that it impacts your income. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Text personal brand, no spaces, all one word to 77222. Now let's introduce our guest for today. My guest today, his name is Rob YB. Youngblood, Rob YB, Youngblood. And Rob is known as the LinkedIn locksmith because of his ability to unlock the power of LinkedIn for revenue generators. Since 2016, YB has empowered over 1,000 entrepreneurs and executives through his LinkedIn coaching to enhance their clarity, confidence, communication, connections, and cash flow. For over 20 years, YB has built a reputation of being the go-to resource for individuals and organizations that need assistance in creating awareness, attracting clients, and facilitating connections that lead to outstanding outcomes. He holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from Virginia Union University. He was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, and now resides in Richmond, Virginia with his wife and two daughters. In his spare time off, he loves to travel to warm places with palm trees. And so we're going to go ahead and bring in YB, Rob YB Youngblood. Rob YB Youngblood, thank you for joining me today for the Maximize Your Brand podcast. Always excited to have new guests. I just got finished introducing you via your bio, but I always like to give an opportunity for all of my guests to share the, in their own words who they are and how they show up in the world. So thanks for joining me. Oh, the pleasure's mine. I appreciate the opportunity to be here on your podcast. Uh, uh, my name is Rob YB Youngblood, as most people know. I'm a native of the Bronx, New York. 
Uh, grew up in a single parent home. My father was actually murdered when I was two. And I often share that, not to gain any sympathy, but to let folks know I'm not a big deal. I just, I just know the big deals. And uh, I understand that in going through that upbringing, it's made me a compassionate connector. And I've been able to build my brand around being a compassionate connector. So it's a pleasure being with you today. Awesome. Compassionate connector. I like that phrase. Well, today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn and how we can leverage LinkedIn to grow our brands, our influence. And we'll even sprinkle a little bit in there for authors on how they can leverage LinkedIn to sell their books. And so my first question today is, why LinkedIn? Why did you go all in and developing your expertise around LinkedIn? Well, several years ago, I was working for a nonprofit organization uh, here in Richmond, Virginia. And a part of my role was to build a network for the organization. And as I would go out and uh, build relationships, I would utilize LinkedIn as a tool for increasing my CRM, uh, client relationship management tool. And as I began to use it, I realized that not a lot of folks were using it for business development. They were using it to secure employment, but they weren't really using it to level up in their business. So uh, in 2012, when I got laid off from this nonprofit position, uh, I was blessed with the, the company that I have now, which is YB Connects, uh, which focuses on increasing the visibility, credibility, and profitability of black owned businesses. And I began to teach business owners how to leverage LinkedIn to increase their visibility, credibility, and profitability. So it's one of the most underutilized platforms. Uh, people still see it as just a platform just to obtain employment, but most people don't realize that it's become a communication and marketing tool to help people to secure more clients and to generate more revenue. Yeah, you know, many people consider LinkedIn to be for career professionals, just looking for jobs applying for jobs, you know, putting your resume on there in order to grow professionally. And so is there a real true opportunity for entrepreneurs to really grow their brand and businesses there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because if you think about LinkedIn, LinkedIn started out as a platform to connect uh, job seekers to recruiters. And as more and more job seekers got on the platform, more and more companies began to get on the platform. So your first level is your job seekers connecting with your recruiters. But then as you had more uh, businesses on there, those businesses are looking for what? They're looking for more clients. So now a B2B environment uh, grows, business to business uh, grows. As entrepreneurs, we often either wanna do business to consumer or business to business, and so now we have an opportunity to connect directly with the decision makers who can bring us in to add value to their organizations. And I've dealt with uh, clients, many, many of them are coaches and consultants and speakers who have generated thousands of dollars uh, all because they were one connection away from a decision maker. And as a result of people being able to promote their professional brand on LinkedIn, it made it easier for them to close those deals uh, versus on any other platform where, you know, it's difficult to promote your professional brand. Yeah, it is. It can be can be difficult. And, you know, I found LinkedIn to be a great outlet for my coaching business and personal brand strategy business, as well as even opportunities for speaking engagements. And so that's why I thought this would be a great topic to start talking about and helping individuals who are growing a brand or who may be authors or speakers who could leverage the platform uh, in their favor. And so we're going to kind of pick your brain a little bit in this episode just to kind of give people some some tips on how to be able to leverage LinkedIn. So what's one of the first things we should consider when we're wanting to really uh, leverage LinkedIn more and start growing our brand on LinkedIn? Yeah, the very first thing is you got to ask yourself, what is it that you want LinkedIn to do for you? And what that does, that begins to provide clarity. And once a person has clarity, then that gives a direction on where they need to go. So the very first thing that you want to ask yourself is, what do I want LinkedIn to do for me? Do I want it to, to help me to attract more speaking opportunities? Do I want it to help me to sell more books? Do I want to be an influencer? Do I want to be a thought leader? 
what is it that you want LinkedIn to do for you? So that's the very first thing that you want to consider. After doing that, there are five critical questions that you have to answer uh, before you even start using LinkedIn. And I know that first question obviously is what do I want LinkedIn to do for me? But uh, the before five you, well, before you go into those five, I don't okay. I hate to cut you off, but I don't I don't want to go into those five so quick before we okay. kind of okay. dissect what's in it for me or what is it that you want LinkedIn to do for you? Why yeah. is it important for us to ask that question yeah. before we really dive into LinkedIn? Why do we need to have clarity around what we want the platform to do for us? Because the most important thing that you have to have is clarity so you can begin to develop the momentum in why you're even using the platform in the first place. Once mm -hmm. again, if you see the platform as just as a place for getting employment, you're not going to use it if you have a business because you're like, listen, I have a business. I don't I don't need it to find a job. Most people who are already employed are barely using the platform anyway. Why? Because I'm gainfully employed. But if you see LinkedIn as a way to establish a professional network that opens up doors for new opportunities, then you begin to use the platform in a different way. So you have to start by asking yourself that question. What do I want LinkedIn to do for me? Or how do I want to leverage the platform? Once you gain that clarity, you move a lot different than someone who is only going to use the platform to find a job or only want to use the platform uh, to uh, secure maybe government contracts or what have you. You're moving differently because you started out with clarity. You started out by asking yourself, what is it that I want the platform to do for me? So good. You know, because I think sometimes we kind of quickly go past certain aspects of building our businesses, we quickly go past certain aspects when it comes to social media and different platforms. And that is the idea of clarity, understanding what do we want the platform to do for us, whether you're talking LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, what is the ultimate call to action, I like to say, at the end of the day of why you're using that platform. So that's Good that you brought that up. Now we can kind of go into those tips that you were going to go into. Yeah, absolutely. So so before I even get to those those questions, I appreciate you uh, approaching it from that perspective because it, it, it's actually even more important for me to talk about the MMD framework. That's the that's the framework that I use to to help my clients really understand. Uh, why they should be moving the way that they're moving. So the MMD framework focuses on mindset, methodology, and then discipline. And when I say mindset, I mean that shift from seeing LinkedIn as just a platform for employment. And then it's the methodology. What are the steps that I need to take? And then the discipline is to, just to be active and consistent in using the platform. So a part of mindset is asking yourself these five questions. Who am I? What do I do? Why do I do what I do? Who do I serve? And what results can those people that I serve, what can they expect to get from me? And once you have that level of clarity, then you can take that message from offline and place that information online so that your LinkedIn profile can speak for you before people speak to you. That's so good. So good. So we need to understand those five questions in order to really begin to come up with our strategy, right? Mm -hmm. For our business, whether you're a speaker, author, consultant, coach, you need to have your strategy and give us that acronym again. You said the MMD. Yeah. MMD framework. So mindset, methodology, and discipline. So that helps when a person, when they understand that framework, then they know they're building up towards something. Mm -hmm. So the MMD framework essentially is the foundation for everything that I teach when I work with my clients, because if they're not getting the results, it's either because they don't have the right mindset, they're not tapping into the right methodology, or they're not disciplined in using the platform on a consistent basis. Good. So this gives us a great pivot or segue into those three aspects of your methodology. 
when we talk about mindset, you know, because we like to bypass this whole idea of mindset when it comes to business. We just want to get to the money, as the song would say. But mindset over money. Because when you have the right mindset, then you are, you're in the right energy and you have the ability to attract the money that you desire to have or attract the customer base or the client base. And so mm-hmm. why do we start with mindset? Why do that, we start just, with mindset? Yeah, you just hit that. You just hit it out the park. Is to be able to attract the right people, right? It's mm-hmm. it's it's when you use certain language, you know, if you communicate a certain way, people know that you're you're operating uh, at another level. You know, uh, there's a phrase in the in the greatest book ever written is that you know out of the mouth, you know, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So whatever's in the heart, where the heart is not the heart itself. Mm-hmm. It's the mind, right? And so, so when when we communicate a certain way, whether it's online or offline, people can then determine how we actually think. And so, you know, once once a person gets the mindset uh, on point, then they can begin to attract people who have either the same mindset or maybe a higher mindset because we're operating on the same frequency. And so, that mindset is very very important. So good. So good. Mindset is important. Money is important as well, but yeah, mindset yeah. is more important than the money. Then yeah. we journey on to the methodology or the strategy. Mm-hmm. Why do we need a method in our business? Why do we need, I know one of my coach teaches us around developing our own methodology on what we take our clients through or, mm-hmm. or the methodology in which you get clients, right? Why is methodology important when we're thinking about, okay, I'm just going to use LinkedIn to market and promote myself? Yeah, it it prevents you from being all over the place, Mm -hmm. right? And so if you have a methodology, you know, okay, I, I, I can't approach step four until I complete steps one, two, and three. And so when I focus on my methodology, even for myself, it allows me to stay on point in terms of what am I teaching my clients? Am I all over the place or am I focused on a specific area? Now, somebody may come to me with their profile already done. Well, that's step one in the methodology. You got to make sure that you have an optimized LinkedIn profile. When I say mm-hmm. optimized, I mean fully complete, you know, hitting all of the metrics that's on the profile. Um you know, making sure that it's communicating effectively who you are, what you do, those five questions that we mentioned. So optimizing your profile is the first part of the methodology. Uh, the second part of the methodology is who's in your network. Mm. You know, most times we, most people, you know, I, I, you, you probably didn't do this, but, but when I got on Facebook, I hit friend, 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 connect, connect, <laughs> connect, right? And then you go back and say, who the heck are these people? You don't even know who these people are, right? So it's really understanding the strength of your network because it's your network that's going to help you to increase your net worth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so knowing who's in your network, uh, number three is then identifying how do I find my ideal client? What what are the strategies? And I teach those things. What are the strategies by which I'm able to find my ideal uh, prospect. Am I shooting for everybody or am I shooting for a specific someone? And how do I get in front of those people? How do I get them in front of me? And then last but not least, what are the activities that you should be doing on a consistent basis so that you can increase your visibility, credibility, and profitability? So, so those are that's the four parts of my methodology to ensure that people begin to uh, increase their visibility, their credibility, and their profitability on LinkedIn. Good. It's good to have a methodology. And quite honestly, on Facebook, I did do that. You know, as people were sending friend requests, hey, yeah. But then now when I look back, I'm like, I don't even know. I don't think I know 5,000 people. Well, not their names, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, for yeah. real. But uh, I think it was ego at first. Mm-hmm. But I've gone actually gone through my friends on Facebook and I just started deleting people, right? You know, that really there's no connection. It's just, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just a number on your friends list at the end of the day. Yeah. But a lot of it, a lot of it is just being able to warm those things up because think Mm -hmm. about it. Many of our clients that we work with, they weren't our friends. 
right? Mm-hmm. I, I, you see these memes all the time, like, you know, you, you know, my friends don't support me. Well, your friends, not they're not meant to support you from that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if I make cookies and my friends are diabetics, well, I'm expecting to just buy cookies just because they're my friends? No. But they can tell somebody about it, right? So, so what happens is those people that we don't know, do we have the desire or will a will to establish a relationship that's that's cold and see how can we add value to them? You know what I'm saying? And so and if they're not willing, then you know, they gotta go. But but if if it's an opportunity to go from zero to ten, ten to twenty, twenty two to thirty, then I'm willing to I'm willing to do that. And and that's a part that that I that I'm able to add value to as a connector because most people struggle when it comes to networking and uh, establishing new connections. They're cool with the people they know, mm-hmm. but when you start stepping out, it's like, okay, what do I say? Like, what, what how do I keep right. a conversation going? So, yeah. Right. That's good. Mm-hmm. So we got mindset, methodology, mm-hmm. and then we have the D. Yeah, the D is the discipline, right? The discipline. So most people say, well, how many times do I need to post? How often do I need to be on LinkedIn? And I tell people, listen, that's up to you based on what you want LinkedIn to do for you. Um, you know, I say at least 30 minutes to an hour, you should be on using LinkedIn. Why? Because if you have a marketing strategy, how much time are you putting into your marketing strategy, period, right? Uh, and, and marketing is not just posting on LinkedIn. Marketing could be you know, are you responding to the messages that people send you in your inbox? Mm-hmm. Are you contributing to conversations on the on the platform? Are you creating articles and putting out articles on a consistent basis? Um, you know, there there there's a number of activities that can be done that, as a result of certain triggers, that once once certain triggers are set off, it's like, oh, okay, I need to I need to I need to operate in this this move to get in front of the people that I want to attract uh, yeah. to my business. So, so it's just the discipline to use the platform on a consistent basis and you determine consistent. For me, I'm on there seven I'm seven days a week. Now, I, I, used to, I was gonna say nine nights a week, but it's kind of like, okay, how do you get nine? Which means I'm on there religiously, religiously. right? I'm on, I'm on there. But for some people, they, they, I don't want folks to measure themselves to me Maybe for you, it's it's one hour a week, but you're consistent in that one hour a week you're showing up. So just being consistent mm-hmm. and disciplined in using the platform. Yeah, that discipline. I can't say that I was the most and have been the most disciplined when it comes to social media as far as following up with people or people who comment on your posts. You know, I know that on Facebook, sometimes I'll just go through and like all the comments or heart the comments but really and truly that's an opportunity for you to respond to the comments maybe even go to their dm and and, and say mm-hmm. something introduce yourself and let them know yeah. how you can best provide value and mm-hmm. so you mentioned something around the whole idea of discipline and posting and you know the different features of linkedin have you found that there's any particular feature via linkedin that works the best or should we be using all of the various features that are made available? Yeah, I think everybody should use, uh, for the most part, all of the features that come with the platform. So, for example, I I was on Clubhouse today and someone asked me about LinkedIn Live. Well, everybody doesn't have access to LinkedIn Live. You have to apply for that. Uh, Everybody doesn't have access to LinkedIn Audio, so you have to wait for them to give that to everyone because it's now in beta. Um, but if you if you if you have an ability to to, to secure uh, recommendations, you should be utilizing that. Um, uh, LinkedIn just launched a new feature where you can get reviews, similar to you going on Amazon and getting your book reviewed. So people should be using that. They should be using their inbox to make sure that they're communicating with people. Um, one of the one of my favorite features on LinkedIn is the voice. Uh, feature where instead of me typing in a note, I can I can talk to the person. Uh, similar to all the other platforms, but I love to be able to have people hear my voice, to hear my inflection. Because I'm a speaker, I bring an energy that's a little different when I speak than when I type. And so that way, you know, people can hear me say peace and blessings versus they read it. Uh, then it, it makes a it makes a greater impact on the person. That's good. So you have you've introduced me to some new features, uh, LinkedIn audio, 
I'm not, I'm not heard that one. I know that I have access to LinkedIn live and I do weekly live streams, you know, this year, at least two live streams a week, one for maximize your brand Mondays. And then every Wednesday, I, I literally either will do our podcast live or I'll play it live, which I love mm-hmm. doing that as well, just to have some consistent flow. And what I like to share with people is that I do these via video, especially because I'm trying to create that omnipresent and have enough mm-hmm. content for people to be able to mm-hmm. consume on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. But that content also having call to actions based on what it is that we want people to do if they take the time out to listen. Yeah, absolutely. 1000%. When LinkedIn audio uh, was introduced earlier this year as a competitor to Clubhouse, they saw okay. how popular House was. And the beautiful thing about LinkedIn audio is the fact that you now get to communicate with your LinkedIn network. Whereas, you know, Clubhouse is just with anybody who's on Clubhouse, which makes sense, right? But if we want to start carrying a more professional uh, conversations, uh, LinkedIn now puts us in a position to uh, facilitate that. Not to say that some of the rooms uh, in, in Clubhouse aren't professional, but some of the rooms in Clubhouse aren't professional. So, yeah. you know. Haven't yeah. been in Clubhouse lately. Um, you know, you, you start to kind of get overwhelmed a little bit with all of the various platforms. And so what is your philosophy uh, as a coach around choosing the right platform? Yeah, I uh, I hear people say just choose one platform and master that platform. I'm a, I'm a fan of LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and and Clubhouse. I'm not much on Twitter. I'm not on tip. Not on TikTok. I know TikTok is the rave. Uh, I'm a philosophy that you go where your clients are, or you mm-hmm. go where you're able to add the most value. Right. Uh, because I love to engage people, I'm not I'm not so much about just throwing stuff out. Like I love to engage people. So being on a clubhouse is important, especially for what we do with uh, self publishing thirty days. You know, it gives us an opportunity to add value. Why? Because the people I want to work with, I want to work with the people that's on LinkedIn. But if they're not on LinkedIn yet, then I need to be where they are and then usher them over to the LinkedIn platform. So it's just a matter of strategy and being where uh, my clients are and helping them to see the value of the platform because if they don't see the value of the platform, they won't use the platform. Now, I'm not working, I don't work for LinkedIn, I don't get a check from LinkedIn yet. I'm speaking that into existence that they'll likely reach out and say, Youngblood, you've been helping us us out, especially amongst uh, black and brown entrepreneurs around the world. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm on a mission to empower uh, and, and impact 1 million uh, black and brown professionals around the world to leverage LinkedIn as a tool for closing uh, the racial wealth gap. That's good. That's good. Well, this has been a great first half. Second half, we're going to talk a little bit around how authors and speakers can really uh, leverage the opportunity of LinkedIn to sell their books, to create programs, and even find speaking engagement. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Are you a corporate executive or career professional who's ready to take your life back, ready to take your time back, and you've thought about becoming a coach, a speaker, a trainer, or consultant in your own business? Well, I want to invite you to schedule a brand maximization discovery session so that I can help you to uncover that expertise and learn how to properly package yourself in an online-based business. I'm Markeith Brayton, personal brand strategist and master lifestyle coach, who's all about helping corporate executives and career professionals to maximize and monetize their personal brand online so that they can create a location-free business and live the life that they crave. What I know for sure is that you want to be doing something that's fulfilling and that's exciting and that provides great value to the world. You want to make a greater impact on the lives of individuals. And you know that if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll always get the results that you've always got. So schedule a brand maximization discovery session by going to my website, markeithbrayton.com forward slash consultation. That's markeithbrayton.com forward slash consultation. And let's maximize and monetize your personal brand. 
All right, welcome back. We're here interviewing LinkedIn expert and coach Rob YB Youngblood. And we've just been talking about how to leverage LinkedIn to help grow your business and your brand. But the second half, we're going to kind of hone in on coaching, speaking, and authorship and how those particular industries can really use LinkedIn to really grow their brand and business. And so when we think about coaching and speaking and being an author and and the connection to LinkedIn, you know, what first comes to mind or what's something that you first teach people uh, who are in those particular industries and how to leverage LinkedIn? Uh, The most important thing is to be crystal clear about what you're delivering to the marketplace. If you're a coach, tell the marketplace you're a coach. If you're an author, tell the marketplace you're an author. If you're a speaker, tell them you're a speaker, but but position it as the type of speaker that you are, right? Mm -hmm. Are you a keynote speaker? Are you a guest speaker? Are you a moderator? Are you an MC? It's important because, you know, speaker is very broad. Right. But if you're an MC, then there are people that are looking for MC. I know a young lady, the most the sharpest MC in the world, uh, Quinn Conyers is one of my clients. And and Quinn is a phenomenal MC. She's a phenomenal host. And she is using LinkedIn to secure opportunities. She's a speaker, dynamic speaker. She teaches women how to speak, but she is looking for MC opportunities. opportunities and so. Okay. So she is leveraging in a LinkedIn to show up as that MC that your organization needs to hire. And uh, and so that, that would be the first thing is just being crystal clear about what are you putting out into the marketplace. If you're an author, say you're an author. I love the epiphanies that people have when I tell them it's important to put on LinkedIn that you're an author. Mm. Because... If you don't, and all of a sudden you come out the blue and say you're an author, then people are going to look at your profile and say, well, why don't you have that on there? Yeah. And the number one reason why is because most people don't didn't know that they could put that on there. Because once again, going back to mindset, people are seeing this as a, a platform to secure employment versus putting your entire uh, professional brand on display. So when people read it, they get an impression of you. Uh, and so I would say just be crystal clear about how you're showing up in the marketplace. Now, as a coach, speaker, author, you know, there are several different aspects of LinkedIn that you can leverage. You know, what type of material or things should we be putting in the featured area of LinkedIn? Should we be writing articles uh, or publications for for LinkedIn? How important is it to have those things populated on the platform? Yeah, so so when I started using LinkedIn, I didn't have a website. Okay. And I had my name, I was able to secure my domain name, uh, ybconnects.com, and then I pointed that to LinkedIn, to my LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn essentially became my landing page. Mm-hmm. And so what I encourage people to do is in that featured section, when you post content, Make sure you at least have content that's going to direct them to your website if you have one. And if you don't have one, then to your landing page for your book or to your blog. Now, the beautiful thing about LinkedIn is that you can literally take the content that you're already creating off LinkedIn and add it to LinkedIn. And we don't own social media. We don't own these, these, these platforms. But what we can do is entice people to come into our domain by providing that level of content that then allows them to click a link that says, read more here, and it brings them to uh, our site. So I would say, you know, the things that you wanna make sure you have in your uh, in the featured section is number one, uh, if you're a speaker, make sure you, you're showing people uh, your, your, uh, your reel, your highlight reel, mm. right? Uh, Make sure that you provide, if you're an author, make sure you provide a way for people to uh, buy your book, promote your book. If you're a coach, make sure you're putting some level of information that maybe it's a a, a talk you're doing. Maybe you're you're speaking directly with someone uh, in a coaching session because you want to show the marketplace that this is what you do. 
Uh, and the only way to, for them to see what you do is for you to share what you do. So those would be a few key things that I would encourage folks to, to make sure that they have pinned on their profile through the featured section. Now, is it still important to blog, put the articles on LinkedIn? Are people still readers or would they rather watch video or, you know, what approach should we be taking there? Yeah, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, people love to consume information. There, there are a ton of readers on LinkedIn. So the articles are definitely still uh, uh, very important to provide. And I'll tell you why. I curated an article in 2015. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Miles Monroe. Dr. Yeah. Miles Monroe uh, was, and, and, and may he rest in peace, but Dr. Miles Monroe was a, a world-renowned minister. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I read uh, an article that he wrote that talked about how your gift will make room for you. And I used that. I took that content. I put it on my LinkedIn uh, article, gave him all the credit, uh, added a nice picture of a gold box and put it out there. This was in 2015. As of today, I'm still getting people that are reaching out. Uh, connected with me as a result of that article, which most people don't realize this, but LinkedIn works very well with Google, mm. right? LinkedIn and Google are like like first cousins, right? And so if you were to type in Google, gift make room, you will see a picture of a gold box. And that gold box, when you click on it, will lead to an article that I curated and it would draw folks to my profile and allow me to engage. And the majority of the people who uh, have been drawn to me as a result of that article were folks from other countries outside of the United States. So so the, the articles are definitely a, a valuable uh, tool, especially if you're an author, because it allows for people to now see you as a thought leader and it allows you to feed people information. Now, you can put videos within the articles as well. Uh, but the articles work well because once you create the article, place it on LinkedIn, you can then place it in other places on the internet as well for it to then draw people back to your presence on LinkedIn. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you mentioned Dr. Miles Monroe. He is an impetus to an aspect of my business. I share this quote with everybody, when whether I'm speaking or on the podcast or in a workshop, and it's the quote around purpose and assignment. And he says that the greatest tragedy in life is life without purpose, life that simply has no direction. Moreover, life's greatest failure is to be successful at the wrong assignment. Mm -hmm. And that quote has stayed with me for many, many years because I myself was a career professional at the wrong assignment. I was climbing the corporate ladder. I was doing everything right within the healthcare industry uh, to hopefully one day be a CEO of a major hospital or or a community health um, organization. But I, I realized that I really was leaning against the wrong wall. And when I got laid off, I learned that quote. And I have made it my mission to help other people to be successful at the right assignment so they can have greater life fulfillment, a greater opportunity uh, fulfilling their purpose as well as making impact and influence in the world. So definitely love Dr. Miles Monroe. Oh yeah, that's important. And it goes back to the first thing that we talked about, right? Identifying what is it that you want LinkedIn to do for you. So you don't want to be in the wrong assignment at the wrong time, meaning yeah. you might on the wrong platform like you maybe you don't need to be on linkedin i'm a firm believer i think everybody should be on linkedin but yeah. i think it's it's how how are you showing up and who are you looking to influence I, I i often hear people say you know isn't linkedin for professionals i say yes it is but what does that make you right you know are you either a professional or you're a rookie there is no in between. Now there's different levels of professional, right? But you either professional or you're not. So, but being professional is just really how you show up, and it has nothing to do with shirt and ties, suits, yeah. and it had nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with this mindset, and also has everything to do with you getting results because professionals right. get results. I don't, I don't want to fly in a plane with a rookie, mm-hmm. 
I want to find a plane with a professional that's going to get me there every single time. And I love the aspect of where you talk about how you show up. One of the reasons why I do my podcast the way that I do it and am a stickler around presentation is because I need to show up as someone who knows all about how to properly brand yourself, how to properly build your personal brand, how to leverage your expertise online. And through the podcast, even though I don't have a book yet, I leverage the podcast to show up as an authority and to show up as a person of influence. And the podcast in and of itself has created wonderful opportunities for me to speak at different people's conferences. It's presented opportunities for me to interview individuals like Stedman Graham and Darren Henson and Roland Martin and even got me two free all-access passes to Bishop T.D. Jake's Pastors and Leaders Conference two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And so it's all in how you show up and how you present yourself as a professional, whether you're a coach, speaker, author, consultant, you know, people take notice. And it's not even all about the likes, right? You may not get a whole bunch of likes, but people are watching. People are paying attention to what it is that, that you're doing. And one of the things that I know that has been very helpful for me is learning how to maybe be on the multiple platforms, but only doing one thing to be on those multiple platforms. And so one of the things that I do with the podcast is I simulcast the podcast across the multiple platforms using a tool called Restream that allows me to be able to do that. And so now I'm not going live on LinkedIn and going live on Facebook and going live on YouTube. I'm able to do it all at once. And then maybe migrate all of those comments so that I can see what's going on at one time. Yeah, that's a valuable tool. One of my clients, his name is uh, Pierre Quinn. He does that as well. Uh, he shows up very well on on multiple platforms when he's interviewing people. Uh, I get the notifications. I immediately jump on. I want to listen. I want to be empowered. And it just so happened that one of the most recent uh, sessions that he did featured another client that that mm-hmm. that he referred to me. Right. So he referred the client to me and now I had two clients on and talking about one of my favorite topics, which was how to revive your dying network. I thought that was a I thought it was a phenomenal conversation. Uh, but to be able to show up in multiple platforms at once is, is a smart move uh, because right. you never know where people are going to show up. I equate it to watching television and having a commercial. Right. If I'm if I'm Wendy's. I'm not just gonna show up on one. I'm not just gonna show up on one channel. I need to be on multiple channels. Why? Because there's there's people that would probably want to eat my food <laughs> on multiple channels. I need to be I need to be in different places at once. So I, yeah, I think that's a really smart move. Well, before we close, I, there are two more questions that I really want to highlight, and that is since we're talking about LinkedIn, the importance of your title and that little bit of space around your description. You know, mm-hmm. how important, how serious is it that we take it serious to have a, a catchy title or catchy description so that people know the value we provide? Yeah, I think it's tremendously important. It's, 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 it, see, LinkedIn and social media in general, but LinkedIn is, is like prime real estate. You want to be able to maximize every inch of it. So uh, in the past, people would uh, have in their uh, headline title at company. And while that's good to be able to help you attract recruiters, it's not good when it comes to attracting your ideal clients. So what I what I've uh, come up with is a six second elevator pitch. I teach my clients a framework on how to develop a six second elevator pitch. And once they come up with that six second elevator pitch, they can take that language and put it on their headline because the six second elevator pitch is designed to help you attract your ideal client. So when you use the language that your clients are looking for and they see it, it's going to draw them in. It's going to make them ask this question. How do you do that? And then that's when you get down to the about section or the summary which allows for you to to basically set it up so you're having a conversation with your prospect. There are many people that in the about section, they'll put their biography, which I think is great. They'll put their bio on there. I think that's great. But a bio 
is one way. You want your about section to be conversational. So it feels like that you're talking to the reader because you really are. And so uh, there's a strategy and an outline that I teach my clients on how to effectively communicate with your prospects using the about section so that number one, you're able to communicate with both introverts and extroverts, but the person walks away having felt like I need your service. So imagine someone reading a, a message or you asking a question, right? So for example, say, say we are uh, looking to support people obviously that want to grow their brand, right? So if you say, are you a coach that wants to increase the visibility, credibility of your brand? There's only two answers to that, yes or no. We're looking for the yeses. We're not worrying about the noes. So if you place that in your about section and a person reads it, internally, mentally, they've already checked the yes box. They're starting to see you as the person that they could potentially work with. They just need a little more information, information. to see you. Right. So so that first impression is important, but how do you how do you structure your about section so that when people are reading it, they're already being influenced by you and they're starting to say, I'm choosing you versus you feel like you have to chase after them. That's good. And so that was going to be my second question around the about question. So I'll switch that question to who are some individuals, if you know, at the top of your head, whose about sections are pretty good that people can maybe reference. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I've already mentioned a few of them already. Quinn Conyers, uh, uh, Pierre Quinn, uh, Marshall Fox, uh, Eric yeah. Thomas. Dr. Eric Thomas, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. Uh, and notice how I'm giving you names of people that I actually had a hand in developing their profile. So I, I, I like to make sure folks are going to support those folks and checking their profile out and uh, and getting getting an opportunity to see how people are communicating with their prospective clients. Awesome. I know Marshall. Marshall and I are in a, a group together. We both use Ecamm Live. Yeah, and there's a oh, yeah. kind of like a men's group that we developed of e cameras that share different things. And so, yeah, Marshall's good. Well, if I could share a quick story, I know I know we we're about to land the plane. Marshall, uh, I was Marshall's very first client. OK. And uh, but as a result of our relationship, I helped Marshall to attract 40 new clients in 90 days. Wow. So, so it was a it was a matter of us using our gifts to bless each other's brands. And now Marshall is nearing the $1 million uh, mark in terms of, of revenue generated over the last five years. And and I'm proud to say that I was the very first client that he worked on in terms of my logo. He's since, he's since eclipsed uh, all aspects of what he did when he first got mm -hmm. started. And I'm proud to be a part of his team. Yeah, Marshall's a great, very talented individual. He helped me with one of my clients uh, last year. So good. Well, we have come to the end of the show, but I always like for every guest to have final words and share anything that you have coming up, anything that you'd like to introduce to people, and also just uh, words of encouragement around the topic for today. And so we'll allow you that same opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, it's always a pleasure to be around people who understand the value of branding and the importance of branding. Uh, so my hat, I tip that off to you. Uh, well, those of you who are watching, listening, understand this. You are your brain. At the moment you speak out of your mouth, people are formulating their opinion of you. And so you have to re realize that you are the brain from from the, the from your name uh, to to how you uh, say certain things. I love to use the, the words peace and blessings. Well, that helps people to know that. Oh, that's why B right there. Why B says peace and blessings. So be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth and what you do online and offline. LinkedIn is a tool like every other tool. You have to learn how to use it. Um, as you learn how to use it, you'll begin to master it. Uh, and for those of you who are aspiring authors or your current authors, realize that this is the year uh, for your new book. And as you put yourself in a position to attract opportunities, leverage LinkedIn to promote every aspect of who you are, whether you're an author, whether you're a coach, whether you're a guest speaker, MC, or even a podcast host, uh, LinkedIn has a place for you to be able to attract those people who need your services. Now, here's the thing. They're going to get what they need. The question is, are they going to get it 
from you. So don't miss out on the opportunity to use the most powerful platform on the planet, LinkedIn, to increase your visibility, credibility, and profitability. Awesome. Well, Rob, YB Youngblood, I appreciate you joining me today for this episode of the Maximizer Brand Podcast. Great, valuable information around LinkedIn. And I look forward to, you know, learning more about your business and about you and maybe even connecting to doing some business together in the future. Yeah, I welcome that as well. Collaboration indeed creates currency. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and listening to the Maximize Your Brand podcast each and every week on Wednesdays, 3 p.m. We live stream these episodes across platforms. And hey, if you are interested in growing your brand and your business online so that it impacts your income, reach out to me on my website, MarkeithBrayton.com and schedule a discovery session with me to see how we can potentially work together. And also, if you want to get tips around personal branding and how do you build a business around your skills, talents, and gifts, all you have to do is text personal brand, all one word. I had to think about that a few minutes. A personal brand, all one word to 77222. And that adds you to my texting community as well as email list. We're always providing content each and every week to help you to learn how to leverage your brand online so that it impacts your income. Always thankful for you joining me each and every week for the Maximize Your Brand podcast and love for you to leave a rating and review in iTunes and let us know what you thought about the episode and also let us know what type of other episodes you'd like to hear as pertains to building your brand and business online. Until next time, just remember this. Always shoot for the top because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. Take care.